Did you know that the ancient peoples did not use the term Negro to refer to themselves or other melanated nations? That is because Negro is a modern word. Later, we will discover that the modern term Negro does have an ancient connection. And the modern people who incorporated the word Negro into their language were indeed influenced by the descendants of those ancient nations whom they usurped. Next, we'll be filtering the term Negro through four elastic resources and learn who the Negroes are not from two others. First, I used an etymological dictionary of modern English to learn the earliest written usage of a modern English word. Now, etymologies are not definitions, but rather they explain what modern English words meant and how they sounded 600 or 1400 years ago. Though you can purchase a hard copy etymological dictionary, however, I use a free online version at tamalonline. Dot com. Next, I use dictionaries to learn the precise meaning or significance of the word, which is its definition. I start with the earliest published dictionary available, the 1828 Norwebster Dictionary. You can purchase a hard copy for your personal library. However, I use free online sources at Webster Dictionary 1828.com or 1828.mshafer.com. Other dictionaries I use are a 1935 Columbia Psychopedia, a 1993 Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, and an online source at thefreedictionary.com. These are the earliest copy dictionaries I have. The earliest published date, the better. With that being said, I have a question for you. While I won't be able to hear your answer, because this is a video, I do want you to take mm, 10 seconds to think about this question. Why would I want to use the earliest American dictionary of the English language available? Time's up. If you said, because information recorded during the early American period were not written for the Negroes, nor with political correctness in mind, therefore, it wasn't published to miseducate you, so to speak. Publications written during the colonization of North America, approximately 400 years ago, were written by elites for elites. So reading earlier publications, it's like being a fly on the wall, listening in on conversations not meant for you Negroes. And if you said any or all of these things, then you understand a lot. There's value in reading resources written 200 or more years ago. Most of these publications have been digitized and stored at archive.org. This free site has been invaluable to me doing my research. Up next, our first scholastic resource, the Etymology Dictionary of Modern English. And it reads, Negro, a noun, a member of a black-skinned race of Africa, 1550s, from Spanish or Portuguese, Negro, black, as an adjective from 1590s, used with a capital N, became general early 20th century in reference to U.S. citizens of African descent. Now, according to the etymology, sometime in the 16th century CEAD, the word Negro, meaning black, was incorporated into the Spanish or Portuguese language, 
which wasn't that long ago. It also states that the Negroes are identified as being a member of a black-skinned race of Africa. So the two questions that immediately came to my mind were, if the Spanish or Portuguese was just incorporating the word Negro as black in the 16th century, what other word did they use prior to 1550? Though a natural first thought provoking question, it didn't seem relevant to my research. The more relevant question was, what event or evolution occurred that influenced the Spanish or Portuguese language when they incorporated the word Negro to mean black. We'll look at that in a moment, but first I'm interested in their usage of the phrase a member when referring to the Negroes. According to Etima Online, Member, a noun, means, among other words, from notion of constituent part of a complex structure. Notion means a belief or opinion, and constituent means serving as part of a whole. And according to the freedictionary.com, One of the definitions for member is a distinct part of a whole. Because I'm learning to look at language with a new perspective, I thought to myself, hmm, probably want to revisit the definition of the word distinct. According to the freedictionary.com, distinct means readily distinguishable from all others, discreet, and easily perceived by the senses, and clearly defined, unquestionable, and also includes separate, not alike, different, and recognizable. I don't know about you, but I'm already starting to get the understanding that the English colonizers knew who the Negroes were before they took them captive. But it's still early. Let's continue examining our evidence. Next, we will filter the word Negro through the earliest American dictionary of the English language, the 1828 Norwebster Dictionary, And it reads, It is remarkable that our common people retain the exact Latin pronunciation of this word nigger. Now, this is Webster's personal commentary on the subject. His definition reads, A native or descendant of the black race of men in Africa. The word is never applied to the tawny or olive colored inhabitants of the northern coast of Africa but to the most Southern race of men who are quite black. So let's examine his commentary first. I presume his common people are speakers of the Romanist languages, which originated from a language spoken by modern Romans and now recently classified as Indo-European languages. And they retain the Latin pronunciation of Negro as nigger. At first, I didn't see it. I didn't understand how the word Negro retained its pronunciation of the word nigger until I began to understand language and how all languages originated from the ancient Shemitic language family, also known as Adamic languages. Vocab Girl, can you give us a little background on the term Shemitic? The root word of Shemitic is Shem. Shem is the English translated name of biblical Noah's son, who is the progenitor of the Shemites, not the Semites, making them a Shemitic people. 
Shemitic languages are the world's oldest languages and includes Akkadian, Aramaic, Hebrew, Arabic, and Ethiopic. Shemitic languages are bilateral consonantal root words, which means you only need to know the first two consonants, which is the root, to look up vocabulary words when using a Hebrew Aramaic lexicon, which is a language dictionary, such as the one I use at twoletterlookup.com. Lastly, though Shemitic languages have natural vowel sounds, the A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y were not written but understood by the ancient people. Okay, armed with that understanding, I could now see that nigger, N-E-G-E-R, and negro retain its pronunciation for black because they shared the same consonants, N, G, and R, which follows the Shemitic language family. This isn't to say that Latin or Spanish and Portuguese languages are Shemitic languages. They are Indo-European languages. We now know at least how the Spanish and Portuguese incorporated their word Negro, because they are offshoots of the Latin-speaking Romans. But the search didn't end there. I now needed to know if their incorporation of the term Negro from nigger follows a Shemitic root pattern. Well, what event or series of events influenced the Latin-speaking Romans prior to the mid-1500s? To assist you with the answer, I created a three-minute clip of the origin of the word NGR and its earlier connection with blackness. The inhabitants of Mizraim called their kings nigger, not pharaohs, which is another Greek hijack. Nigger meant black god because the nigger kings were seen as representation of the sun and their sun god. The ancient nigger kings, who were pure black African Hamites, saw black skin as sacred and a direct blessings from their sun god, Aten. The recognition of the nigger kings was a living god and the black skin as a blessing spread to other cultures. In fact, the term nigger was incorporated into the Amharic Shemitic language as niggas or nikash, which means king of kings and was used as a title of the sovereign of Ethiopia. The word Ethiopia also is another Greek hijack for the territories which Biblical Cush, a Hamite, ruled. The first people to corrupt the term nigger was the modern Roman invaders of Egypt who may have heard the term used to describe the leader of Egypt or Nubia. The term nigger was later used to mean any black negroid person that the Romans saw in Africa or anywhere else. It is also known that when the Romans first encountered African Hamites, they described their hairstyles as dreadful locks. So therefore, my people, stop calling your beautiful natural locks dreadlocks. To continue. The English colonizers borrowed the term Negro from the Spanish. The English captive owners degraded and defiled the entire name by enslaving the Negro and turning the original term nigger into the racist byword nigger. And that's just one of many things that have been turned upside down. The end. So the answer to this million dollar question is, when the Romans began usurping brown black Shemitic inhabitants throughout ancient lower Ethiopia in West Africa as early as the fourth century. This contact would have indeed influenced the Indo-Europeans' language incorporating the word nigger, meaning black. I rest my case. Your witness. Hmm. 
There goes that word usurp again. Vocab girl, what does that mean? According to the freedictionary.com, usurp means to seize and hold the power or rights of another, for example, by force or without legal authority, to take over or occupy without right, and to take the place of another without legal authority. Earlier, we examined Webster's commentary on the word Negro. Now let's examine his definition. So the definition reads, a native or descendant of the black race of men in Africa. The word is never applied to the tawny or olive color inhabitants of the northern coast of Africa, but to the more southern race of men who are quite black. Now, Europeans often interchange tawny with swarthy. Now, swarthy and tawny referred to someone who was of dark complexion and was never applied to European. The labeled olive-colored people was a later application by the Europeans who created the mythical modern Mediterranean race we know today. The Mediterranean people of today are the mixed descendants of the Europeans who invaded North Africa and Northeast Africa, erroneously called the Middle East. Now, let's break down the first sentence of the definition. A native or descendant of the black race of men in Africa. At first glance, you would probably interpret this sentence to mean that the Negroes are descendants of a black race in Africa. Am I right? Totally bypassing the word native or the words or. That is because we were taught that we are descendants of Africans who were brought to North America as slaves. But with new eyes and mindset, we shall examine the text closely. Webster is saying that the Negroes are either native of North America or they are descendants of the black race of men in Africa. Why do I say that, you ask? For one, because of the word or according to the English grammar rule. And I'm certainly no grammar girl, but in fact, let's get vocab girl to help us with this one. According to an English grammar rule, or is a conjunction. A conjunction is used to indicate an alternative or uncertainty. With that understanding, Webster's usage of the conjunction or indicates that he was uncertain whether the Negroes in question were natives of the land which he resided in or whether the Negroes were the descendants of the black race of men in Africa. It does not make sense to interpret that Webster was questioning whether the Negroes were natives of Africa or descendants of the black race of men in Africa, because in their understanding, natives of Africa are descendants of the black race of men in Africa. You feel me? If not, hold on. It'll become clear once we understand who Webster's records the natives of America are. According to Webster's 1828 dictionary, American is a noun, a native of America, originally applied to the aboriginals or the copper color races found here by the Europeans, but now applied to the descendants of the Europeans born in America. Let's read that again. The term native of America was originally applied to aboriginals or copper color races found here by the Europeans but now apply to the descendants of Europeans born in America. Hmm. Sometimes you come across some non-melanated people who call themselves Native Americans, or sometimes Indians for that matter. Webster's last statement is connected to that thinking. 
but that's a topic for another lecture. So Webster had personal knowledge of the copper-colored natives, who they also called aboriginals of America, where he resided. He may have had knowledge of black brown African Hamites, whether shipped here from Africa or already residing in North America. Either case, you can understand his uncertainty, as both quote unquote races were black brown people during this time and were already assimilated into the European society. I hope that was a little clearer. But if you're hearing this for the first time, hang in there. There is more. Before we move on, let's gain more understanding of the earlier explanation of the word aboriginal. According to the Etymology Dictionary, Aborigine is a noun from the 1540s from Latin Aborigines, the first inhabitants, possibly a tribal name or from or made to conform to the Latin phrase ab origine, which means literally from the beginning. Extended 1789 to natives of other countries which Europeans have colonized. In other words, Everywhere the Europeans, quote unquote, colonize, which is a euphemism for the word usurped, they labeled the original peoples found there as aborigines, a term, as you just learned, not only applied to Australians. As a side note, ab, a prefix occurring in verbs borrowed from Latin, means not, off, or away. So in other words, ab is a negative word. Therefore, it is more accurate to call the first inhabitants origines, not aborigines. You can see two words in origines, original and genes, which is the unmixed DNA. On that note, to make America great again really means to make America origines again, as was in the beginning. Next, let's filter the word Negro through our next holistic resource, a 1935 edition of the Columbia University Encyclopedia, published more than 100 years after Webster's published definition, and it reads, One of a black or, a conjunction, dark-skinned race, further characterized by woolly hair, broad, flat nose, prominent eyes with yellowish cornea, thick lips, and prognathous jaw. In a loose sense, the term includes all of the natives of Africa, but it is more properly applied to the tribes of Central Western Africa as the Sudanese and the Bantu. So by this time, the term Negro had been pretty much applied to all black brown people wherever the Europeans encountered them, whether in Japan, China, Africa, Caribbeans, and the Americas.
What's interesting here is that scholars identifies the Negroes by their physical characteristics, either belonging to the black race or the dark skinned race. Hmm, two or more different types of black brown people. Who would have thought? To continue with the Columbia Encyclopedia's definition of the term Negro, it reads, their religion is a form of animism and nature worship within coastal regions, admixture of Mohammedism or of Christianity, where fetishism and witchcraft are predominant and have given rise to voodooism. The Negroes were found doing something they should not have been doing with people they should not have been mixing with. This was a habitual pattern of the Negroes. Our next scholastic resource came from 1993 Merriam-Webster Dictionary, 10th edition. Published over 150 years after Webster's. And its definition reads, Negro, a noun. Then it gives the etymology of the Spanish or Portuguese language meaning black, which is from the Latin word nigger, nigger, incorporated into the Spanish or Portuguese language in 1555. And the definition is a member of the black race distinguished from members of other races by usual inherited physical and physiological characteristics without regard to language or culture. Now, it is likely that the writers of the 1993 Merriam's Dictionary used the earlier Columbia Encyclopedia to record its version of the definition while retaining the etymology portion from Webster's 1828 Dictionary with regard to slight spelling of the Latin word N-E-G-E-R as N-I-G-R and N-I-G-E-R, confirming the schematic root pattern we just learned. We can see the consonants did not change, only the interchangeable vowel sounds. Similar to the etymology, Marion Webster Dictionary recorded the word member to categorize the Negroes as part of the black race. Marion Webster's also recorded the Negroes were distinguished from members of other races. At that time, I was rather curious as to why the Negroes were recorded as being distinguished from other members of the black races or other races. After all, were we not taught that we were a bunch of no-history people sold by other Africans. Yet, scholastic resources records the opposite. My curiosity led me to look up the word distinguished for more understanding. Vocab girl, can you help us with that? According to the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, Distinguished is a noun and it means separated or known by a mark of difference or by different qualities and separated from others by superior or extraordinary qualities. Now I was even more curious. If we didn't have a history, why would Columbia Encyclopedia, a product of Columbia University, use the word distinguished to describe the Negroes unless they knew something we didn't. Let's go to the freedictionary.com for additional definitions. The freedictionary.com defined distinguished as, in addition to what we already have, characterized by excellence or distinction, dignified in conduct or appearance. Made conspicuous by excellence, 
marked. Oh, it gets better. Two words that I wasn't sure how they fit were conspicuous and marked. Vocab girl, can you enlighten us, please? Conspicuous means easy to notice, obvious, and mark is defined as, among others, singled out, especially for dire fate. Oh, but wait, there's more. As dire means, warning of, are having dreadful or terrible consequences. And fate means the inevitable events predestined by this force, a final result, an outcome, destruction or downfall. OMG. And our last resource have this to say about who the Negroes are not. The 1984 Young's Compact Bible Dictionary defined Biblical Ham, or properly named Kemet, as a son of Noah and father of Cush, Egypt, which is Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. While they may have all been dark-skinned, they were not the forefathers of the Negroid races, but rather of peoples associated with Egypt in the north of the continent of Africa. Our second Bible dictionary witness, the 1993 Zondervan Compact Bible records similar, nine years later, by a different publisher, and it reads, Ham, meaning perhaps hot, the youngest son of Noah, probably born about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, who are the Hematic Cushites, Libyans, and Canaanites. Now, they seem to know that the Negroes are not Hamites. Do you? This concludes our evidence at stop one. We have learned that the Negroes are not African Hamites and their downfall was predestined. The colonizers not only knew who the Negroes were by their physical characteristics, but by their extraordinary qualities, which separated them from other dark races. Because the Negroes were partaking in religions of other nations, their fate was sealed, their destruction imminent, and the Negroes were labeled as the original copper-colored people of the Americas. One last thought. If the Negroes are not Hamites, that leaves Shemites, or descendants of Shem, or Japhites, who are descendants of Japheth. Thank you for flying Quest Airline. Please enjoy our in-flight short movie clip of the week, rated everyone. This one and a half minute clip is about a young North Carolinian student in a spelling bee. The word he is asked to spell is niggas, N-E-G-U-S. The student appears to be either unfamiliar with the word, embarrassed by it, or perhaps both. He asked the officials for the definition and origin of the word. Listen carefully as you will learn how the modern word Negro evolved from an ancient shamanic word niggas. Negus. Negus. Um, what is the language of origin? Uh, Ethiopian to Amharic. Um, 
Um, what is the definition? A king. It's used as a title of the sovereign of Ethiopia, Negus. Negus. Could you use it in a sentence? The Negus ruled Ethiopia until the coup of 1974. Negus. Uh, could you repeat the definition? A king. It's used as a title of the sovereign of Ethiopia, Negus. Negus. And, and would you say the word loudly for the judges? Negus. One more time? Negus. 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 N E G U S, Negus.